champion Bobby Chez defending against challenger Diamond Jim McDonald. Once again, I'm Jim Lampley, joined now by ABC Sports boxing expert Alex Wallow. And Alex, yesterday we stood here and watched a 10-round battle between Hector Camacho and Howard Davis. This should be entirely different. Jim, yesterday's fight was a tactical fight. Two boxers fight to went to a decision. Today's fight should be just the opposite. Two brawlers, both have excellent chins, both not afraid to let a punch land on them in order to give one of their punches uh, back in return. I wouldn't be at all surprised if this fight ended early, but it should be a great fight while it lasts. Indeed, if you like slugging and heavy punches, this should be exactly up your alley. And what's the significance of the bout for both fighters? Well, for the champion, Bobby Chez, this is a chance to keep building his reputation. He's been an active champion since he won the title eight months ago. This is his third title defense. Bobby wants to maintain a high profile while he waits for the opportunity to try to unify the light heavyweight title by fighting either WBA champion Marvin Johnson or the big payday against WBC champion Thomas Hearns. For Jim McDonald, this is his second chance at a light heavyweight championship. He knows he may never get another chance at the title, Jim, and he better grab that brass ring right now. And he has that chance against a Bobby Chaz who's really in the second stage of his boxing career. Here's a closer look. On April 7, world champion boxer Bobby Chez waited for the results of school board elections in Wanaku, New Jersey. Running for a school board seat is unusual for a professional fighter, but Bobby Chez is not the stereotypical boxer. He was directed into boxing at an early age by a strong-willed father who demanded he learn the sport at home while at the same time excelling in the classroom, where Chez graduated sixth in his high school class. My father was a very hard man. If I didn't come with straight A's, there were serious repercussions in the house. So in order for me to play sports, which I love so dearly, I had to get straight A's. And if you faced him without straight A's, you know, there was more character building on the way. Yeah, you could get a little whooping here and there. And uh, I got the straight A's. I got scholarships offered and uh, even appointment to West Point because of the boxing background. But this boxing bug was implanted in my system. I was obsessed with it, and I had to come back to it. You know, and when you have guys like Muhammad Ali and Sugar Ray Leonard commanding purses like they have in the, in the boxing game, you say to yourself, you know, it's a hell of a dream to shoot for. Let's give it a try. Before going college to pursue his career in the ring, Chaz turned professional and quickly rose to prominence. Billed as the Golden Boy, TV boxing's matinee idol. In January 1982, the undefeated Chaz decisioned another middleweight prospect, Robbie Sims, brother of champion Marvin Hagler. A title shot was guaranteed if he could defeat the number one contender, Mustafa Hamshow. But he had problems making the 160-pound weight limit, froze during the fight, and absorbed his first loss. The meteoric rise ground to a halt. Seven months later, Chaz's father committed suicide and left the fighter dazed and uncertain. I did a lot of crazy things uh, immediately following my father's death. You know, I just wasn't myself. Uh, I got engaged. Uh, I wasn't really sure if I was ready to get married, but I got engaged anyway. I was trying to fill an emotional void which was missing. Later, indicted on assault and burglary charges, Chaz pled guilty to burglary. He had fallen fast. But trainer Tommy Parks got Chaz back into the ring, this time as a light heavyweight. And after a string of victories, he had maneuvered himself back into title contention. September last year, champion Slobodan Kachar is swept aside in five as Bobby captured the IBF crown. He had brought himself up from the bottom. Winning the title meant, at that time, just about everything to me. I could never understand, you know, when women cry when they're happy. At that moment, I could understand how they feel. I was that happy that I just could break down into tears. Chez has defended the title twice since. First, with this one-round demolition of David Sears. Then, earlier this year, he leveled Willie Edwards with this punch in round two. A month ago, still committed to his suburban New Jersey community, Bobby ran for a school board seat and was elected, though he was barred from voting for himself because of his burglary conviction. It's been an eventful life. Chez tries to be philosophical. My life itself it was a little bit of a roller coaster ride. Quick rise of stardom, stardom, back down to the bottom, back to the top. All these things, these ups and downs, when a mature person, they call it character building. That's what they call it. Today, surrounded by family and friends, Chez defends again. We'll look at the challenger when we come back. Being Bobby Chez, challenger Jim McDonald is a young man who, through much of his boxing career, only dabbled with the sport. But one surprising victory turned him around and made him more serious about boxing. Here again, a closer look. 
Well, I don't think the fight will last five rounds, and I'm not going to say I'll knock him out in five rounds, but I, <laughs> I guess I have to say that because I don't think he's going to knock me out in five rounds. I'm, I don't think that's possible. That's about as brash and boastful a statement as you'll ever hear from light heavyweight challenger Jim McDonald, a born-again Christian who lives with his wife and two daughters in Gaines, Michigan. He was raised in nearby Flint and still trains when he can on the quiet country roads near his hometown, though training usually takes him 50 miles south to Detroit. Ironically, it was another Detroit fighter who started Jim's rise. In 1985, he was considered a tune-up for number one ranked 175 pounder Willie Edwards. McDonald thought to be a raw prospect, but that right hand in round four changed his status to contender. Thus, the career and the training began in earnest. Jim works harder than most in his chosen profession, as he believes it takes a lot of sacrifice and dedication to become a champion. And he must climb step by step to attain his dream. For today, at least, he's reached the top of the stairs. And sacrificing is, like you said, being away from my family, not being able to spend the time with them that's required when you're close. All the, the getting up and running, everything you do involved with training for boxing is, isn't like it's a big fun thing all the time, you know. It's, it takes discipline to get up every morning and make sure that you run, make sure that you train right, make sure that you eat right. Today marks McDonald's second title shot. In a June 1985 war with Michael Spinks, he twice staggered the champion with trademark right hands, but took a fearsome beating before the bout was stopped in the eighth. For me to go out there and with a fish in my robe and represent, kind of represent Christ in a way that's an example that I would have to be 100% in my lifestyle is a battle, especially when I, when I was raised in a way that was the opposite. I let myself get involved with a lot of junk, you know, get doing this, trouble with the law, and a lot of, lot of messed up life, and had to turn all that around, and all the temptation that came upon me then. It takes a strong, I believe that's what, uh, what a, you know, as a person would describe what a man really is, in my opinion, that's what a real, a true man really is, a man that can face sin as sin and be able to be strong enough in his own will to face it and say, I'm not going to do it because it's wrong. And as we come back live, McDonald enters the ring here, surrounded by a large entourage, somewhat different than other groups of its type in boxing. This one entirely made up of devoted, born-again followers of Jesus Christ. There you see the record for McDonald, 20 wins, three losses. What Kez has to worry about, 18 KOs, most of them the product of the devastating right cross. Meanwhile, Bobby Chez will soon enter the ring, and that arouses the enthusiasm of the New Jersey crowd. We are just down the road from Wanakue, New Jersey, Chez's hometown, and he, throughout his career, has been a big favorite here in the state of New Jersey and, indeed, all along the eastern seaboard. Chez and his group making their way toward the ring. anthem as delivered here by David Clayton Thomas, whom you will remember as the former lead singer of Blood, Sweat and Tears, as ABC Sports presents Coors Professional Boxing once again, the IBF Light Heavyweight World Championship bout between Bobby Chez and Jim McDonald. Incidentally, David Clayton Thomas, a good Canadian boy, Alex, and he got all the words right, unlike one of his countrymen once in 1965 in Lewiston, Maine. All right, we've met both of the fighters. A word about the strategy you expect in this bout. Well, as we said, it figures to be a brawl. Chez is a two-to-one favorite, primarily because he punches well with both hands. He's a great body puncher. He puts punches together. McDonald, in the past, has been a one-dimensional fighter. 
he drills you with his right hand or he doesn't drill you with anything. He says he's acquired some boxing skills, which he's going to use today to keep Bobby Chez off balance. But it's very difficult to change your style in the pressure cooker of a world championship fight. Both men have excellent chances, as we said earlier. And one thing to watch for, they are both very resilient. They can come back very quickly, recover quickly when they're hurt. So they're dangerous when they're hurt. You talk about both men having excellent chins. In some instances, particularly the Michael Spinks bout, it has appeared to me at least that McDonald's chin may be too good for his own good, in effect. He absorbed a tremendous amount of punishment in eight rounds with Michael Spinks. Well, that's right. McDonald was able to stand up to eight rounds of Michael's power punches. He took a one-two combination in round three that Michael was absolutely astounded he stood up to. He didn't even blink. He actually hurt Michael himself in the fifth round, wobbled Michael as badly as I've ever seen him wobble. So in the Sphinx fight, his first try for a title, he showed the two things which give him some hope here today against Chez, a great chin and a powerful punch with the right hand. Bobby Chez is confident of victory in this bout, as of course he would be going into any of his fights. What's down the road for Chez? Should he be able to get by McDonald today? He wants, does he not, to unify this division? Absolutely. As we talked about earlier, he wants to fight Marvin Johnson, who's presently the WBA champion, or Thomas Hearns, the WBC champion. Right here on ABC on May 23rd, we're going to have Marvin Johnson defending his title against Leslie Stewart, the number one contender in the WBA. And the winner of that fight actually would be the most likely next opponent for Bobby Chez if he has his way. All right, quickly, let's take a look at the tail of the tape on the two fighters today, and you will see that Bobby Chez remains 25 years old. He's been around and has been such a big public figure for so long that you might think he was older than 25. McDonald carries a height and reach advantage into the ring, as do almost all of Chez's light heavyweight opponents. Yeah, Jim, one of the questions about Bobby Chez has been, is he a legitimate light heavyweight, or is he just a blown-up middleweight? I think Bobby's been one of those in-between guys, too big to make the middleweight limit and too small to carry the 175 pounds effectively. But today he looks very good at 174 and a quarter, and I think he might have matured into a full light heavyweight. All right, let's join ring announcer Ed Darian now as he concludes introduction of the two fighters, and we'll hear the referee's instructions. He weighed in at anything, 174 pounds. This young man has 31 wins, one loss with 22 knockouts. From Waterkey, New Jersey, the International Boxing Federation Right Heavyweight Champion, Bobby Chappie Chez. Chez. Okay, gentlemen, you both received your instructions in the dressing room. Therefore, I expect you to obey all my commands. I expect you to act like professionals. Do you have any questions? Touch gloves, go back to your corner, good luck. Fight scheduled for 15 rounds. The three knockdown rule and the mandatory eight count are in effect. There is no standing eight count. Three judges score the bout on the 10-point must system. The referee is Tony Orlando of New Jersey. The three judges, Tommy Kasmarek and Rocky Castellani of New Jersey. Gary Merritt from Indiana. A final look at the two boxers as they prepare to meet in center ring. saw Bobby Chez work to the body. Early in a fight, he likes to come in under a taller fighter, work first to the body, and then come up to the head. It will be interesting to see how careful Chez will be about staying away from the McDonald right hand. Yeah, Tommy Parks, his trainer, told us before the fight, we respect McDonald's power, but we can't be so respectful of it that it takes us away from our strength. We have to be in front of him. We have to be punching with both hands. The crowd got excited, but both fighters have been fairly tentative right here. Neither of them have really set themselves yet and let their hands go. I think that's a measure of their respect for each other's punching power. Jazz misses with the jab. Most of his work has been done downstairs so far. McDonald throws the right hand. Neither of those punches landed cleanly, but Bobby doesn't want to lay on those ropes. 
He has been effective. Actually, both boxers are effective laying on the ropes and then trying to counter coming off the ropes. They both do it very well. Sometimes McDonald falls into a trap of doing it too often, and he lets his opponent get too many free shots. He said today he's going to work against, uh, work uh, towards breaking that habit. Indeed, that seemed to be the thing most on McDonald's mind. He prepared tactics for this fight. He said that he wants to box. And as you pointed out, Alex, the problem is how much can you change coming into one big fight? Well, he's tried to change here in the first round. He's thrown some jabs, not very effectively. And he just saw Chez counter the jab. Not something McDonald is used to doing. And he left a lazy jab out there, and Bobby drilled the right hand. McDonald almost looks too relaxed right now. He almost looks lethargic. Low blow there, I thought, by Chez. He's not really zipping his punches. And on those occasions when Chez has landed, McDonald has smirked and offered facial expressions aimed at indicating to Chez that he can't hurt him. Generally, that means that they did hurt, but uh, we'll wait and see. Holding and hitting there by McDonald, holding with the right, punching with his left. slower first round than we might have expected and I think that's a measure of how much respect each of these men has for the other man's punching power. We will stay between rounds as Jazz and McDonald repair to their corner. Jazz to listen to the instructions of Tommy Parks and Jim McDonald to listen to Detroit's Bill Miller. McDonald looks like he's almost in a fog out there. You saw him walk back to his corner. Sponge, sponge water. How about a nice round of applause? Very lovely. Right here. Take the water bucket. Right here. The water bucket. Well, my good friends, Paul Dunn, Bill Miller, Bill Miller, Bill Miller, Bill Miller, Bill In association right. with the Trump Plaza Don't Hotel, box Casino, him, you slip. present the, the World Heavyweight Championship okay. bout. It'll be Give me that bucket, Michael John, please. Spinks John, battling John. Jerry no. Cooney. Get that bucket in there, okay? Oh, Monday John. evening, June the 15th, right here in Convention Hall. Okay. Okay. Giant tickets put that bucket inside with me next time. Box office. All right, take it out now, John. All important date, Monday evening, June 15th, here at the Trump Plaza. Tickets now at the box office. Well, most of that minute between rounds, and Jez's corner devoted to take the bucket in, put the bucket out. Tommy Parks trying to give some on-the-job training to John Lasalandra as to just where he needs the bucket when he's working on Bobby Chez in between rounds. You saw Ralph Citro in the McDonald corner. Good left hand of Chez staggers McDonald. I was just saying Ralph's again. Ralph Citro working with the end swell, the piece of cold metal, the metal you keep on ice, trying to keep down the swelling around Jim McDonald's eyes. He was cut badly over the right eye in the Sphinx fight. Time you saw McDonald coming in, try to feint the right hand to the body and try to come up with the head. He did not connect. Good chest right to the body. Nice move by Chez. Got out of the way of the McDonald right hand, came right under it. He did not let his hands go countering, though. He should have. He made the man miss badly, had him vulnerable, and did not let his hands go. But already McDonald is starting to back up and lay against the ropes a little bit told himself he wouldn't do. Well, you could almost see his mind working there, Jim. He felt the back of the ropes. He had his old habit of leaning against him, and he said, no, 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 Jim. You're in here for the title. you got to fight. Jazz starting to land with the jab. That right was blocked. A minute and a half going to round two. This bout is not yet heated up. McDonald only now beginning to break a good sweat. He was dry through much of round one. Another chest punch below the belt. Tony Orlando warned him. Good right hand by Chen. McDonald does not look good. As he came away from that exchange, his legs did not look good. 
And it is obvious that Kez is very conscious of working to the body, digging the right hand into McDonald's ribcage as often as he gets a chance to. McDonald might. I'm better off as a one-dimensional fighter. This jab is getting countered. I'm eating left hands. I'm sorry, I'm eating right hands over the top. Well, he already seems to be backing off from throwing the jab as frequently as he did in round one. McDonald told us before the fight he's in the best condition of his life, but here in round two in the closing seconds, he's breathing very, very heavily. So the first two rounds have established a pattern which for the moment would appear to be favorable to the champion. Round three begins between Bobby Chez, IBF light heavyweight champion in the white trunks, Jim McDonald in the light blue trunks, the challenger from Flint, Michigan. First two rounds had belonged to Chez, largely on the basis of body punching. And on the basis of the fact that McDonald really didn't let his hands go. Chez was busier and more accurate. McDonald really nothing on him he's not setting his feet he's not ripping he looks like a guy trying to pace himself and that is not his fight two counters by Chez yeah two great counters to the body and that will bring Jim McDonald's hands down so Chez can go to work up top McDonald talking to himself now in the ring or perhaps talking to Chez into a, a big deficit in terms of rounds here. That was a good, solid right hand. We would like to alert our local stations along the line that barring any major developments, we'll take a station break at the end of this round. Of course, if something dramatic happens in the next 121, that could change. A few seconds ago, you saw another nice move by Bobby Chez. He moved up. Oh, good right hand there. Once again, he didn't let his hands go. I'm sure that'll be something he'll try to do in his upcoming fight. Chez much less cautious now, beginning to open up and show the full arsenal. I guess it's possible McDonald's setting a trap for him, trying to lull Chez into being overconfident, coming in and giving him punching opportunities. But it just doesn't look that way to me. It looks like he just can't solve Bobby. Bobby's been a little bit too elusive using a jab, countering effectively, and punching well to the body. And McDonald just hasn't been able, able to solve him yet. And of course, there were times against Spinks, Alex, when McDonald looked just as helpless, if not more so than this. But he did land on two or three occasions the big right hand, which for moments at least, totally turned that bout around. It could happen here. It hasn't yet. McDonald is just eating right hands. Whether they're counters or leads, he, every one of them's getting home. All right, it's another Bobby Chez round, and we'll return with more of ABC Sports coverage of Coors Professional Life. After this, from our local round four begins in Atlantic City in a fight so far dominated by the body punching, the counter punching, and the all-around effectiveness of the busier Bobby Chez. Jim McDonald comes out again, trying to throw the right hand as round four begins, but again, Chez corners him and digs to the body. Jim, watching this fight is like waiting for a bomb to explode. The one thing that has surprised me is we talked earlier about McDonald's claims that he was going to be a boxer. Actually, the, the fighter who's shown the boxing skills here more than we expected is Bobby Chez. He's had a little bit of a jab he's shown to McDonald. Made him think about it. He's countered well. He's taken the opportunities when they've been there. He's been patient. Hasn't been as wide. becoming more and more lame with each passing moment. Uppercut got through the guard. The third strong uppercut Bobby has landed this round. This is 
so mature, very calculating, very effective by the kid. And there's McDonald falling into the old habit as we predicted he would, laying on the ropes, perhaps waiting to get an opportunity to land that right. Chez is being very smart. He's smothering him. He's not giving him the punching room to come off the ropes with the right hand. Right in his face. McDonald stiff-legged as he backs up against the ropes again. 1.13 to go in this round. Good stiff Chez jab. Tommy Parks would like him to try to double with that jab, but that will come in time. More and more, this is evolving into target practice for Bobby Chen. Body with the right hand, pushes the man back of the ropes, and then comes up top. McDonald's hands were up, but Chez just punched right around him. We said coming into this fight, Jim McDonald had an outstanding chin and an outstanding punch. So far, all he's got to do is to be able to prove he's got a good chin. And that's a rather hollow honor. Much water. Oh, you mind, Parks to say to Chez, he's been just about perfect. Bobby Cappy Chez, he uses the nickname which belonged to the great Joe Lewis. And one of the things about Bobby Chez that is similar to Joe Lewis is that he's an outstanding finisher when he gets his man hurt. Chez likes to say, in the language of the ring, when you get a man drunk, you mug him. The thing that's impressed me about Bobby here is he hasn't lost his head the few times he's landed real solid punches and gone in wild and left McDonald a chance to bang and counter him. He's been very, very restrained and controlled. We said coming in that these were two brawlers. To this point, one hasn't, and one apparently can. Well, the biggest win of McDonald's career was over Willie Edwards. Chez also has a knockout of Willie Edwards on his record, but Edwards was able to stagger Chez many times in that brief bout. McDonald hasn't been able to do it. Technically, Edwards handed uh, Chez the only knockdown of his career at the end of round one in that fight. Referee, he didn't actually go down, he bounced off the ropes, but in between rounds, the referee called it a knockdown. Low blow there, and again, another warning by the referee, Tony Orlando. McDonald bending over. McDonald absorbing an awful lot of punishment. And unlike his other fights, you just saw him bounce off the ropes. He wasn't even looking to counter with that right hand. He just fell into a clinch. He's just come up completely empty. Blood beginning to trickle now from both nostrils. Jim McDonald. 
His nose was broken in the Sphinx fight. Indeed, he entered the Sphinx fight, he says, with a broken nose. Could be that it has given way again. He had some physical train, uh, some uh, physical problems in training for this fight uh, with his ear that uh, broke up his training a little bit, but he, he claims that uh, he recovered from that and he's fine. Great physical condition, as we said earlier, the best physical condition of his life. Solid right hand by Chez. rounder it would be a miracle if it goes that far and Alex between rounds the ring doctor took a good look at Jim McDonald two things happened Frank Doggett the doctor in control here came in and looked and apparently came over to Tony Orlando the referee good right hand Tony Orlando could stop this fight right now McDonald is doing absolutely nothing in the same time Larry Hazard the head of the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board looked over he shook his head he's standing up right now Larry Hazard he's motioning for Frank Doggett to stop this fight Incidentally, in fact, to let you know for the first time that now that we have airtime remaining in this show as a result of the early conclusion of this bout, we're going to get a chance to show you one of the best and most talked about fights of the last 10 or 20 years in boxing. That, the Ray Leonard versus Thomas Hearns welterweight unification championship fight that took place on September 16, 1981. We'll have highlights from that bout when we come back. In Atlantic City at the convention center in the ballroom, I'm Jim Lampley. Alex Wallow is climbing into the ring. And now ring announcer Ed Darian makes the official announcement. At 37 seconds of the sixth round, and the winner by a TKO, and still the International Boxing Federation light heavyweight champion, Bobby Chappie Chez. Third successful title defense for Chez since taking the crown from Slobodan Kachar. He now looks forward to the possible creation of a path toward unification of the light heavyweight division. And Alex Wallow is standing by now with Bobby. Let's see if Alex can hear me and get the interview started. Bobby, I thought that w I thought that was your most controlled performance I've ever seen you give in the ring. Well, you know, again, Tommy Parks, they took me up to Villa Roma in the Catskills in Calicoon, and they did a great job in situating me in training camp. Tommy worked with me every day, and uh, he got me down. He's an, he's an expert, strategic genius, and it showed in my performance. When I listen to him, that's what I do. And Carlo Dees brought me along. They told him, don't take this guy. He's a tough puncher. He's a one-punch knockout artist. Carlo believed in me, had faith in me when many people didn't. He moved me to where I am, and I looked as convincing as ever. We said uh, when we were calling the fight, Bobby, that McDonald was terribly disappointing. Obviously, you had a lot to do with that. Well, I think he came out trying to do what he had to do. He had some questions. He said he wanted to answer at the press conference. Can I really punch and can I take a shot? He hit me with one or two, but my defense was really good today. I slipped and blocked a lot of shots. He was a little slow. And I think I answered his question about can I punch. I had him hurt at least three of the rounds really good. 
And it was just a matter of time. His body is chin. They were all folding up. One thing I liked about it was, Bob, that you didn't lose your head when you had him hurt. You stayed controlled. You didn't take any chances. You stayed tucked in pretty well. You used the body. You just seemed to do everything right. Well, Carl and Tommy have been working with me, and that's part of being a champion. i got to learn to go to distance if I have to, stay controlled, not waste punches, make them count. And uh, I want to thank ABC for this opportunity to show my stuff. And also, Mark Edis, the Trump Plaza and company, everybody's done a great job, and we're happy to be, in, happy to be here and hope we come back. Bobby, if we would, just look at the monitor here for a second, and sure. we'll comment on the end of the fight. McDonald protested, but we said the fight should have been stopped. He was just doing nothing in return. Well, he's basically in a passive defense now, and I'm hammering him inside of his head. He goes back on the ropes. Again, he's not offering any resistance. His body shots, left uppercuts, the landing clean, the right hands around. And, uh, you know, this is the end of each round, the beginning of each round. He had a few spurts in between. The guy's got a great chin and a lot of heart, and there's no sense to let him get hurt because he was going to stay there until he got physically destroyed. Bobby, you know that there are skeptics who will always be around who say you're an overhyped fighter because you're white and because you're intelligent enough to present a very positive public image. What kind of a win do you think, what kind of an opponent do you think you need to be to prove to people that you're a fighter? Well, I have a lot of uh, respect and great admiration for Michael Spinks, the former undisputed champion. I wanted to go on and fill the shoes he left behind. I was trying to fight some of the guys he fought. McDonald stopped at eight. I stopped him, I think it was six or seven. So I I'm on a par with the... the what he, the performances he's put out. Davis Sears, I got rid of in one. Michael took three. He's a little slower starter, a little different styles, but I want to beat the people he beat so that they can say, he's fighting people. He's fighting the guys that are here. He's a dangerous puncher. The Kachar, the champion I beat, a hell of a boxer, six, two, two, three, six, two and a half. I'm beating everybody in the top ten, and Carlos picking the opponents for me, getting me what I can. We're hoping to get Tommy Hearns soon, and Tommy works for me, you know, as great as always. Without these two, I can't go and do it by myself. Bobby, congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thanks very much. Now back to Jim Lampley down to ringside. All right, thank you very much, Alex. And we remind those of you who uh, are boxing fans and want to stay with us, and we hope that you do, as ABC Sports presents Coors Professional Boxing, that we are going to show you round-by-round -round highlights of Leonard Hearns from 1981. And we'll have that when we come. ABC Sports presents Coors Professional Boxing, and Chaz retains his IBF Light Heavyweight Championship. Not a terribly competitive fight, but an impressive and well-rounded performance by Chez, who showed cool, calculated discipline, punching power, and the ability to effectively finish his man when he had him in trouble. Down the road for Chez, as I've mentioned before, the hope of trying to unify the light heavyweight division. And now we get a chance to move on to other things. So much has been written and said about Ray Leonard in recent weeks as a result of his comeback victory over Marvin Hagler that we thought we might uh, give you a 